Rescue parrots are awesome. Right there is Tico, one of our rescues. He's an orange winged Amazon. What happens when your rescue comes with issues? I had someone post, they just got a scarlet macaw who was said to be friendly before they were put at the back of a pet store for nine months where they probably didn't come out of their cage, period. Probably weren't touched, probably didn't get to play, probably in a small cage. And unfortunately, maybe fortunate just to have a place to be while the person that adopted them found them. Who knows? So in a nutshell, what do you do when you have a parrot who has some emotionally wound, emotional wounding? Hey guys, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parrotless Bond. I have over 22 species of parrots. I love my parrots. I am also the author of Get to Know African Grey and Cape Parrots, and I have a new book coming out, Feathered Splendor. Available or all or soon to be available on Amazon. If you're here to get inspired, I'm here to help increase your bond with your new rescue, reducing the need for another rehoming. Uh, hello. Hello. Dealing with a rescue in some ways is really easy and in some ways it's really complex. So sort of simplistically put in just a video, I'm going to say that you have to help your parrot overcome the experiences that have led your parrot to feel like life sucks or people suck or you know they've been abandoned, that kind of thing. Um, sure, being in solitary confinement kind of thing, even if there were other birds around, for nine months would damage any of us. It would change any of our personalities. Certainly a parrot who's highly social and used to always being with other parrots. So that's what you're up against in a nutshell. And therefore, in a nutshell, make sure that you use routines, make sure that you're patient, make sure that you are understanding that this bird is having a hard time and needs some love and compassion. Tico, um, we've had for many years now, and he came to us that way, didn't want to be touched, didn't want to be anything. Hi, Tico, can I pet you? He's raising his feathers, that's yes. This is progress. Good boy, Tico. And that was enough. Um, it has taken a while for Tico and I get to get to that place. How have I done it? By just leaving him to come out of his shell on his own not forcing him to do anything, giving him his space, giving him unconditional love, unconditional food, an unconditional clean cage. He loves golden conures, so he's got a golden conure here, uh, right here, Botrix. And so Tico knows if I take Botrix at this point, it's happened over and over so uh, consistently and reliably. If I take Botrix out of their cage, um, at this point, Tico knows I will bring Botrix back. If I try to pick Tico up, he knows that all I'm gonna do is try to pick him up and take him somewhere, generally speaking, where Boatrix is. So he's learned to trust me. How? I haven't veered from that. I don't do anything other than let him hang out with us, offer to pet him, offer to give him treats, speak kind words to him, uh, give him what I know he wants, a companion, uh, love from me sometimes and in limited amounts, but I let him have his space. And by so doing, he has been able to relax. And you can say relax the wall of protection that he had up so high. Is it still there to some extent? Yes. But now it's not a fortress. Now it's like a chain link fence that you could see through. And you know, it's like, eh, I'm, he's cautious, but he doesn't have to worry. So be patient, give a lot of time. Uh, Rosie there saying butter I'll get you some yes I'll get you a nut hold on Rosie isn't the same she was rehomed being rehomed and we uh, adopted her but she wasn't in that kind of situation she's loving all she's known as love fortunately so it's different but I still spend a lot of time with her and just let her hang out sometimes she's on me sometimes she is um, cuddling with me other times she's on my shoulder, we're going for a walk, and other times she's just hanging out with us. So don't make any assumptions about what your parrot has to be like. They have to be hanging out with me. That's not true. They have to let me pet them. No, that's not necessarily true. You may want to get to that point, and you saw I'm able to do that with Tico. So 
if that's your goal, you know, know exactly what you want and then keep it in mind, tell your parrot that's what you want. For example, if you want to be able to pet them and then be patient, be calm, give them lots of time, give them lots of love. Hopefully that will really help you because uh, we have a lot of rescues. Um, you know, a lot of parrots that we've gotten as adults, Rosie wasn't a rescue because she wasn't in a bad situation. And by bad, I mean where she had no home, she had, you know, but we've had several like that. We have three Amazons that were rescues, our two cockatoos were rescues, and it goes on. Our two Africans were rescues, but um, with love and patience, they've all come around. Some of them are deeply, deeply bonded with us. So it does happen, but when you have a rescue, it just takes some time. I think rescuing or adopting through rehoming is a wonderful thing. You can have a wonderful pet that way uh, and still have a wonderful bond. Not only are you saving a bird by giving them a home, but sometimes it, it kind of creates the opportunity for an even stronger bond because they know when they're being loved, they know when they haven't been loved. And so if you come along and love them, it creates the opportunity for a wonderful bond. It just takes more time and patience and the wonderful thing about that is that then hopefully you won't take them to a rescue. Thank you for joining me in this blissful video. If you want some awesome parrot merch, please be sure to visit shop.parrotbliss.com. Post your comment below. I love great questions. I love hearing about your experience. And then I try to get to your video. If I miss it, just let me know. And then I will see you in the next golden video. Ah.